Thanks, guys. Data is the next generation's version of Mr. Spock. His non-human nature contrasts and, I guess, highlights the humanity of the other characters. But before we can ask if artificial intelligence will be like human intelligence, we have to define human intelligence. Who is intelligent? Someone who can memorize pi to 100 digits but doesn't get the jokes in bizarro? Someone with a brain so clever they can take the word brain and turn it into Brian? Who asked you? Brian Fawcett is a science fiction critic, and he's the author of Public Eye, a book of essays and stories investigating the dehumanization of Western society. Brian, it's Commander Rick. What do you think of artificial intelligence? I think artificial intelligence is one of the scariest things that we're facing because, and for reasons which I don't think the scientific world has quite got their head around yet, um, the human brain neural synapses within the human brain travel at a very slow speed, 267 miles an hour. Um, the difference is that a human brain can theoretically connect from any point, but they still don't know how the thing connects, whereas a computer operates by speed. I mean, um, electrical impulses travel at 9,600,000 miles, an, no, 960 million miles an hour. I got it wrong which is 2,400,000 times faster than our human brain calculates, okay? Now, if you listen to all the optimists who are talking about artificial intelligence, they're saying it's, it's on the way, and they're right. What they're not paying attention to is the kind of intelligence that, that will eventually evolve from artificial intelligence will not be the same as ours. It'll be based on speed, and it won't have any of the kind of sense of humor that we have. I mean, you get humor from being able to make a very broad contextualization. Like, for instance, if I tell you a joke about how many uh, men it takes to wallpaper a room, um, and the answer is one, you just have to slice them real thin. Uh, in order for you to get that, you've got to make about 600 sideways leaps. I mean, you're understanding about half of Western civilization and what's going on in the world today to get that joke. The computer can't get it because it won't go sideways. The fear that people have of AI, the fear that people have of intelligent machines, even if they're not at the level of artificial intelligence. Um, I have it. I mean, science fiction writers are probably the last people to go to computers. You realize that William Gibson, famed cyberpunk author, wrote his famed cyberpunk first novel on an old-fashioned manual typewriter. He had never been near a computer. <laughs> Yes, the fear of artificial intelligences are running amok, like Jason in Robert Sawyer's Golden Fleece, Hal in 2001 A Space Odyssey, my computer at my old bank, the computer in John Varley's wonderful story Press Enter, the Daleks in Doctor Who, Dalek, Dalek, Colossus, the computer in D.F. Jones' novel, The Terminator, Nancy, and the race of machines called the Mechs in Gregory Benford's novel Great Sky River. Once you have machines of reasonable intelligence, they can be just as nasty as we are. <laughs> uh, I don't think you will have full control over any intelligent machine because uh, you don't have full control over any intelligent person. And the thing to realize about intelligence is that the ability to make mistakes is inherent in intelligence. And you can regard sometimes violent behavior as just the wrong choice. From that simple basis alone, you would expect machines to do things that we don't like. In the story behind the eyes of dreamers that I did, they're essentially the human beings are the pets, and the artificial intelligences are really our successors. They're running things, but it's for whatever reasons they have, they keep these human beings around. And it's a nice life if you like the life of a house cat, say, who has a good home. Sounds like the only limits on intelligent machines will be the physical limits on what they can hear or see. I don't believe in artificial intelligence. I find the idea of artificial intelligence kind of, um, well, I, th I think it comes from uh, a basic, I don't want to say misunderstanding, because that's, that's giving too much weight to my own opinion, because it is nothing but opinion. I think the, the entire totality of the organism, um, the, you know, the, 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 your, from your toenails right up to the hair on the top of your head, that the air that you breathe into your lungs, the chemicals that you ingest, have so much to do with who you are as a person um, that you can't detach that and put it in any kind of mechanical form. Nancy! The robot is, after all, kind of pathetic. You know? 
Pathetic. Yes, sir. pathetic. You're just jealous, Nancy. Artificial intelligences are really our successors. Which may one day surpass us and force us to live on its gifts. Once you have machines of reasonable intelligence, they can be just as nasty as we are. I use these hands as you be just as nasty as we are. I use these hands as you be just as nasty as we are. <laughs> you want nasty? I'll show you nasty. Take this. Uh, Nancy, look at us. We were supposed to be talking about intelligence here, and we're acting like a couple of petty, silly, ignorant world leaders. Listen, artificial intelligence is really actually sort of interesting. Really? I guess I was just sort of worried that I could be replaced by a, a machine. Oh, good. You know, I've always thought that real intelligence knows that the key to survival is cooperation. If we ever do make artificial intelligences, hopefully they'll think better than we do, because if they don't, we won't be able to pull the plug. And if we can't pull the plug... on second nature, the search for the Loch Ness Monster. Fresh sightings of the legendary creature made by 35 restaurant owners and hotel keepers around the loch. Also, snakes, do they have leg envy?